the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown is a real fear, and it happens often to people, you know, be it in professional fields, in sports, you know, and the likes. Uh, sometimes, despite being prepared, you know, for an event or an outfit, you always feel that something is missing, and uh, oftentimes that thing is, you know, just a little bit push, or a voice, you know, someone behind you telling you that everything is going to be all right and uh, they believe in what you do even though they don't understand the full picture. Finishing from university, uh, coming back home, I decided to join my family business. Uh, but right from, you know, teenage days, I've always liked to do things differently, you know, infuse innovation or technology in whatever I do. And that wasn't different when I joined the family business, you know, from uh, automated uh, attendance monitoring system and the likes. Uh, everything, I wanted to change things overnight, which of course, you know, you get to have a lot of resistance and also people not believing in what you do and also having a, you know, big question mark whether what you are doing is right and it can have real impact uh, to the business. Uh, but that hasn't deterred me, you know, from constantly trying despite having a lot of uh, resistance. Um, and I was trying to work you know, across board, you know, on the entire uh, value chain and the different factories that we have. Uh, but one thing remain, uh, you know, that fear of the unknown uh, and actually working with people that truly believe in uh, uh, what you do. So after usually a stressful work day at, uh, you know, the factory, I go to play polo with my friends. Um, but there was this young man that, you know, caught my attention. Um, who I came to realize is the junior brother of uh, the person that takes care of my horses, and his name is Bashir, uh, who is also a polo lover. Uh, one thing that stood out, uh, despite not having anything to do, Bashir constantly is coming to the stables, you know, and making, help make preparations, you know, for um, us when we are going to play polo. But something was very, very different, you know, about him is, he likes doing things differently, you know. Uh, whenever Bashir is, you know, arranging uh, the horses for the day, you notice that they're extra clean, or the tack, you know, uh, you know, set up in much, much better conditions that, you know, averagely they do. And um, that immediately caught my attention, and I connected uh, with him, and we became friends. Uh, and he's always that person that likes innovation, you know, uh, he would say, can I have your phone so that I can take nice pictures of you so that you can post it, you know, with your friends uh, on Facebook. And due to Bashir's kind of approach, we immediately connected, you know, and became friends. And uh, that's how I found my new uh, buddy, uh, who, even if he doesn't understand fully, you know, what I'm trying to do, uh, but is willing to jump on it and learn and is willing to do things uh, differently. And uh, that time, you know, I needed someone like that to work with me at the factory. Uh, so I was asking what was his previous job where, uh, you know, he was a storekeeper. At that time, we really don't need a storekeeper, but, you know, I need to make a uh, way for my friend uh, Bashir. And um, we got him employed and we started working. Everything, you know, was different. Instead of uh, hard copies of uh, record keeping, you know, we started moving into digital. Uh, this guy could barely use uh, smartphones, uh, but then we worked through the learnings of how to use computers and spreadsheets uh, and the likes. Uh, at some point in my family business, uh, you know, I wasn't very motivated, you know, uh, because factory has a lot of reputation and I wanted to chase my dream, uh, which is to build technology uh, products. So I decided to move, you know, to a different city, uh, the capital, you know, of Nigeria, uh, to start off my technology business. But even as at then, Technology was very new. Uh, people couldn't see the value in building, you know, artificial intelligence system, robots, you know, and the likes. So I had to look for something, you know, uh, to complement that while waiting for the market, you know, to become ready. But still, there was something clear. You know, I need a partner and I need someone that would believe in that kind of crazy dream. And that was when I reached out to Bashir and I told him, you know what, uh, why don't you move to Abuja and, you know, we find something doing together. Uh, but then, uh, coming from different backgrounds and having different technical skills, what could Bashir uh, do? And then there was the boom of construction, 
in Abuja. And then we said, uh, why don't we have a block uh, manufacturing industry? Uh, but unlike any block manufacturing industries, we wanted to do something very different. So we ordered equipment, you know, uh, outside the country, and then we got a special mold that molds a different kind of set of blocks. Uh, but of course, you know, at that stage, you have limited resources. Uh, I remember we, you know, having a container, uh, 40 foot, where it's my office as well as Bashir's room, and uh, also stores where we, you know, keep, uh, you know, our raw materials. Um, we ensured that we were building the best of blocks. You know, they were different. They were not completely hollow blocks like every other person in the uh, industry. And we were getting a lot of customers. We had automated reports, uh, but should could now use all you know the CRM uh, tools. We are reaching out to you know clients online uh, and the likes. And one thing I've noticed uh, interesting, just like Cheetos, behaviors they rob you know on other people. You could see that Bashir was inspiring people around, even the blog industry, from people coming to sell drinks that they used to package in polythene bags to now, pack, you know, giving it a proper package, you know, because he's a that kind of a cool, neat guy that likes things organized, and he also liked to rob that tin, you know, of uh, to other people. So uh, fast forward, you know, from uh, blocks, you know, we were we went into recycling, where we we're recycling plastic, I mean plastics, as well as uh, cut paper carton, you know, and you know supplying it to companies that will reuse them into producing new uh, materials. Uh, we did a lot of uh, work, and by then, the technology industry was becoming more and more matured, and I was my attention was divided and get uh, leaning towards more of the technology side of uh, business, uh, giving less attention to our block and recycling industry would uh, be sure. But the good thing is both businesses were very well matured and now we are back to that boring stage again of, you know, not so much to do and we have to move into the next uh, thing. So I uh, founded a technology hub while Bashir got married and uh, said he wants to move back home, you know, uh, to be closer to his family. To cut the story short, uh, I wanted to give back, you know, because I know the kind of person Bashir is and just like me, always want to do things differently. So um, whenever I want to do a construction project, I go and look for the best architects, uh, the best interior designs and the likes. But one thing was clear that whatever we're building cannot be conventional, you know, has to be something very, very uh, different. And that was, you know, uh, an opener for all the kind of activities we do around uh, this construction. And this was originally inspired, you know, by the kind of culture and attitude that Bashir has, you know, infused in me uh, over the years we've worked together. The key learnings on takeaway, you know, from this is number one, you have to be, you strive to be different in whatever you do. You don't know how far and, you know, it will take you. And uh, secondly, you need to look out for progressive people. It doesn't matter their education level, you know, what they do in life. As long as they are willing to move from point A to point B, you know, you constantly look out for those kind of people, you know, uh, to work with. Uh, the last thing is you need to give people chance, you know, because you don't know how, you know, they will inspire or how they will affect the kind of things you build in the future. Bottom line is that people that will inspire you might not necessarily come from Silicon Valley. They might just be right next door to you. And uh, once you have these three things in mind, you'll be able to find your own Bashir. And I hope everyone gets to find his own Bashir. Thank you very much.